Christian Barmore is a 6'5", 315-pound beast of a defensive tackle. He is a redshirt sophomore, which means he's only actually played in two seasons. Uh, but in my opinion, he is very explosive, and he shows great feet uh, at 315 pounds, right? He's a big dude. He's tall. He's lengthy. He has those long arms. Um, and here's a, a great example of that. This is from the national championship game. You're going to see him lined up right there playing the three technique over Wyatt Davis, who in a lot of people's opinion, is a likely top 64 pick. Uh, he's probably the best guard coming out. Uh, and Barmer does a great job, man. Like, he gets his hands right there, and he just drives him right into Justin Fields' pocket and almost almost gets his hands on the bar right there, right? It's, that's pretty good. Uh, keep in mind, that's the best guard coming out of college football, and he just drives him. Um, it was fun watching the best guard go up against the best defensive tackle. Um, but in my opinion, I think the best defensive tackle ended up winning a lot of these battles. Now, with that being said, uh, Justin Fields is a great quarterback. I mean, look at that throw right there, right? Like, that's that's a fantastic throw. But uh, let's move forward and let's get into the next play. All right, guys, let's move forward. You're going to see Christian Barmore right here lined up in the one. Uh, he's going to get double team. He takes that double team on very well, and he ends up making the play. Um, you know, one of the things I love about this young kid who he's a very raw still, right? And he, it's not like he's raw and he doesn't have the skill set. Uh, he's raw and uh, he's going to just get better, right? He's so freaking young. I think he's like 20 or 21 years old right now. Um, he's going to get so much better. But the way he takes that double team on um, and still is able to make the play like Number 71 and 55 had no shot. And obviously 55 gets off of him uh, to make that next block there. But uh, 71 uh, didn't want anything to do with them. In fact, they actually both kind of got off of him. I, I feel like he pretty much controlled 71 the whole entire way. He has good arms, right? He has long arms and uh, he, you know, you can't move him very easily, right? You see him right here. He has his arms on number 71 and he's going to just push 71 right out of the way. Uh, and at the same time, 55 has to get off of him to get to the next level. 71 has no control, man. Barmore understands how to utilize his hands, his body. Um, I think he's going to be special, man. I think he's going to be very, very special, but let's jump forward. All right, guys, I want to move forward and discuss this play here. You're going to see Barmore right here. He's going to kind of like loop around a little bit. He's going to do a little stunt here. Um, but what's interesting is number 55 is not a bad um, bad player right there, right? And you're going to see him straight toss this guy. Like, look at that. And he almost gets in there, and he still pressures the quarterback. Um Again, that's a great play right there, right? Like, he gets his hands right there, and he's almost able to knock that pass incomplete and swat it down the line of scrimmage. Um, but the way he uses his hands, man, like, I can't stress it enough. I think that's his his best trait, his best quality. Look at how he rips number 55 downwards and just gets right past him. Um, you know, Christian Barmore gets double teamed. More, you know, anytime he's in the game, he's going to be getting double teamed. And that's just a fact, right? You're going to sometimes even maybe triple team the guy. Um, you know, and, and of course, the uh, the Alabama uh, defense, they're going to bring extra guys, right? Like, you bring a guy here, another guy here, um, you know, and you still want to double team Christian Barmer. You expect your running back to get in there. And Justin Fields does a nice job uh, basically climbing the pocket, right? He avoids the pressure. Um, he set, resets himself and gets a nice pass out. Um, and he ends up completing this pass. But uh, from the defensive line's perspective, Barmore does a really nice job uh, to get pressure even when you're double teaming. You're not really expected to get that pressure. You know, I, I personally believe that Christian Barmore is a first-round pick, like 100%. And I think a lot of people generally do agree with me. Uh, but the thing is, is there's some people who say he's overrated and, and there's no way he's going to go in the top. 17 to 18 picks uh, to be 100 percent honest if he's there with the 17th pick the las vegas raiders should should take him right like without without a doubt um he's he knows how to use his hands man and he's very hard to block uh when you just watch this play look at how he extends his arms on number 71 you know at this point when you have your arms and your hands locked out the way he does 
you won, right? You have control of number, and he does, of number 71. And then he tosses him to the side and ends up making the play. There's nowhere for the running back to run. Like, if the running back wanted to run this between the uh, that center and that right guard, right, uh, through that two gap or even through that four gap, right, if if Wyatt is able to make a little bit better of a better block, there's no way, man. This is too good of a job by Christian Barmore. Uh, he goes above and beyond. This is not his responsibility to do anything more than just contain that gap, and he still ends up helping and, and making the tackle with uh, uh, Dylan Moses there. Uh, but let's move forward. Here's Barmore lined up on, uh, to us, it looks like it's the right defensive tackle, but he's lined up at the left defensive tackle spot for the Alabama defense. Um, he does a great job, man. Like this, again, he's powerful. You guys can watch him right there. He's going to basically go to the inside. They run a stunt with the two defensive tackles. But, you know, people talk that he's not that good of a pass rusher. You know, he's a big guy, man. Like, He's going to hit 71, and 71, like, it's thrown backwards. 71's not a bad player either, right? Uh, he does a good job, and he almost gets there, right? Like, he's right there. Um, you know, in the NFL, this ball does not come out this quick, right? Corners, safeties, everyone's better in the NFL. It's going to be a little bit harder for quarterbacks to make those throws. That's a sack in the NFL, right? Or you're going to hit the quarterback right there. Uh, he gets close, and again, these are some of the small things that this guy brings, man. Uh, let's jump forward, and let's get into the next one. You know, when when you talk about a special player, Christian Barmore, it tells you how special the guy is. You know, when you have four guys coming, and the fact that they double-team him every single time... That, too, you're double-teaming him with literally the best guard in college football with Wyatt Davis. I mean, that right there and, and that fight, man, like, you know, he's trying. And even then, you can even say, like, the right tackle steps towards him a little bit, too, right, just to get that little initial uh, punch in uh, as you're going to see the right tackle right there, um, get that punch in. But you got the best guard, and you're still double-teaming him, right? Um I think he's special, man. But let's go forward, and I want to show you some uh, productive plays. I guess I want you guys to watch this play here. He is lined up over number 55. Um, and initially, he's going to uh, try to get around 55. You see his left hand right here slap the side of 55. And he's going to try to basically swim, right? And he kind of loses his balance a little bit. And 55 has him now. But the fact that Barmer's so strong... He still just kind of pushes him to the side, right? You see that left hand right there? He kind of just throws him to the side. And he gets upfield, and he gets upfield. And obviously, Justin Fields is one of the best quarterbacks in college football. He steps up, right? Now, obviously, in my opinion, number four should have probably closed this gap down a little bit faster. He goes way the hell out there. And because of that, Justin Fields has this huge gap. Um but if the gap was closer, right, if if number four was a little bit closer right here, this is a sack, right? Christian Barmore does a fantastic freaking job right there. Um, of course, you see the, the referee there uh, right there called the hold. That's a great freaking pass rush, man. Um, it doesn't always work, right? But it's the fact that, like, the second effort, the third effort, the fourth effort, um, it's... You know, that's what I want to see, man. Like, the initial punch doesn't work, um, but he comes back and he keeps going and going and going. Um, and that's why I believe Christian Marmer is a special player, man. Uh, he has a lot of different pass rushing moves. He doesn't only try to do one thing, uh, but at the very end of it, if it doesn't work, he still has power, man. He still, still has that SEC strength. Uh, and he's young, man. Like, he's really, really, really young. He's By the time he's in year four, or five of the NFL, he's going to be dominating players, man. And these are the types of players. Keep in mind, all five of these guys right here that he's going up against will at least have a solid chance, if not 100% will be in the NFL. Like, Ohio State doesn't have players, you know, that aren't in the NFL. Like, number 55 was the 40th best player coming out of, of high school, right? The 40th overall best player coming out of high school. So, he's a good player. Um, I think he's a sophomore right now, but... Um, it's it's impressive, man. I, I really love Barmore. I think he's a top 15 pick. Latest, he goes 17th to the Raiders. Um, but the team should take him, man. I know some people are hesitant, but the guy's a good freaking football player. Uh, let's move forward. And let's get into some more plays. You know, I, I said this just a second ago, but 
you know, you win with your hands, man, especially from the defensive tackle position. If you want to be great, you learn to use your hands. And you look at this. The second the ball snapped, he punches, man. And he punches. Great base right there. And he controls, man. And that's absolutely beautiful. Look at this. He has number 55 straight turned. And he has him stopped. Now, obviously, Justin Fields keeps the ball here. Um, but, you you know, you just see, like, how good of a player this guy could be. Uh, I love Christian Barmer. I think he's going to be a fantastic player. Uh, so many great qualities and so many great traits. So uh, let's just discuss the next play. You know, when, when you want to be a great defensive tackle in the NFL, you have to have more than just one move, right? Uh, you can try to swim. You can try to uh, basically do a bunch of different things. But the thing is, is when you want to be great, when you look at uh, Barmore here, he's going to try to basically go underneath number 71 rip by him and try to turn his body it doesn't work because he gets slowed down right there by number 76 so the way he's going to get around that is he's going to use his left hand and he's going to swipe down at 71 there get his hand on the back and then just swim over him right right there that's, that's a nice move right you pull yank and swim uh, and he's almost there you know justin fields kind of Lobs it out there, and that is a touchdown. But uh, overall, man, Christian Barmore, I, 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 I love it. I love it. Let's get into the next part of, of the film because uh, from here forward, he dominates, right? He, he doesn't have a ton of great plays like the first 40 or so snaps uh, defensive plays in the game. And he only played about half of those anyways. But uh, I think in like the second half forward, he, he dominates, right? So let's get into the next couple of plays. Now, when I say he dominates, uh, these are the types of things that I mean. Watch him right here take on the right guard. Um, and, he, and he's going to just throw this guy, man. Like, he has him locked out, and he throws him out of the way. Uh, and he makes the play. You know, again, these are those types of things. When I watch Barmore, I think to myself, man, that's that's the stuff, man, right there. Um, here's the thing. Uh, Wyatt Davis came out of the game. All right? I, I don't know if you got her, but number 76, man, he has no shot to contain Barmore. Um, Barmore locks out, locks out, and he's able to control him, and he throws him. Great job. Let's get into the next one. You know, some people say Barmore doesn't have the tape, right? Some say he or she is that left defensive tackle. Some say he doesn't have the production. And the thing is, is he was hurt, right? Like, don't forget, he was hurt in the beginning of the year. Um, he wasn't healthy, and he got healthier as the season went along, but... You know, the awareness, the football IQ, the way he understands what offensive linemen are trying to do, and the way he gets around it, man, um, that stuff's impressive in my opinion, right? Uh, he does a good job getting there and making the tackle for a loss. Great freaking play by Barmore. Uh, and, you know, you got to flex on him. Let him know, man. Let him know. Celebrate. You deserve that one right there because you made a great play. I think this was fourth down here. So uh, great job right there. Flex on him. Celebrate and let him know. You know, when, when Barmer gets to the NFL, uh, one of the things teams are going to love is it, it's not always about just, just getting the sack, right? It's about being disruptive. It's about making the quarterback feel uncomfortable, right? In this play specifically, like, he gets right upfield, and um, basically he almost gets the sack, but it's the disruption, right? Think about this. This left guard off the snap takes a step to his right, right? And the second he takes a snap, and it's to the left for us, right? The left of the screen, number 77 here. He's going to take a couple steps to the left. And that is all Barmore needs. Barmore is able to just get right past him, and he almost gets there, right? Number 77 does a good job pushing him upfield, but as a quarterback, that right there is not something you want, right? Uh, again, Justin Fields is one of those quarterbacks who he's not going to take a two- or three-step drop. All right, he kind of just stands in place and, and makes the throw. In this instance, it didn't work out for him. Uh, but Bomber does a good job just getting upfield and uh, almost being able to get the sack. But again, it's all about that disruption, right? Cause disruption. Here's another good rep right here by number 58. Obviously, in this play, he does get flagged for this. But uh, it, it's, it's interesting because I don't necessarily agree if that's a flag. Like, he jumps up. I, I, maybe he uses his helmet. I don't know it's hard to tell from the all 22 angle, um, but he kind of lands on fields, but fields is also throwing it and he, you know, he, he hits him. Um, 
But the, the important part is, is this is just a quarterback rollout, right? Like just the quarterback sp sprint out to your left and throw the pass. He's fast enough that as soon as number 55, the center, the tackle, all start going to the right of the screen, he's fast enough to see that. He gets his hands on 55 to slow him down. And notice how he squares 55 up. He turns him. That slows 55 down, and then basically he uses he has enough speed to uh, get past him, right? And you see, he slows him down, he bases him up, and then he's going to use his left arm to swim right there. Or I should say rip, not swim. Uh, he uses his left arm to, uh, to rip through number 55, gets upfield. Almost swats the pass down, but lays a huge hit on the quarterback. He ends up getting flagged for it. I don't know if I 100% agree with that. Um... But yeah, it's it's a nice play, and and you know, let's move forward and get into the next one. All right, guys. So I, I mentioned this um, a couple of plays ago. I said the second half is when Christian Barmer started dominating, um, and this is what I mean. And and here's a, another thing, right? Uh, Barmore did get flagged on the last play, and th this was literally the very next play, right? Here, Barmore is. I want you guys to watch Barmore. He's going to beat his guy. Once he beats his guy, he's going to get close to the quarterback. Watch Justin Fields and watch how he kind of throws this ball and then he's kind of scared. Okay, uh, Barmore beats his guy and Barmore is coming and he's going to be scared and you see it right there. You see that stumble? Let me back up. Watch Justin Fields here and he stumbles right there, right? And that's because the pressure is coming and he felt that last hit, right? He doesn't want to get hit like that again. Um, but yeah, Christian Barmore is starting to dominate. He's starting to take over this game and we'll watch this from the back side um Barmore's gonna do a fantastic job just getting right past uh the guard the guard has no shot um it, it you know again it's just those strong hands man he gets like that initial punch he he just does a push and pull and he gets right around that guy that's a beautiful move right there uh let me know what you guys think about that but do you guys think justin fields uh was scared right there he didn't really want to take that hit i i think he was right i i feel like he is kind of scared and and he he felt the last hit right i mean like there's no other way to put it uh great move right there let's get into the next play christian barmore is a special player this is a couple plays later uh, he's gonna beat 55 right off the the snap and uh, he he gave it to 55 in this game right especially in the second half and obviously they double teamed him right the center's right there to help catch him uh, but if you don't double team him Justin Fields is gonna gonna go down here um obviously that ends up being a touchdown or I think it's actually out of bounds um that's it's a nice move man like you know in the last play he pushed and pulled him downwards in this play he's going to just literally just go right over him right right over him gets in there gets his hands up obviously he gets doubled with that center uh number 48 here uh is a really solid player as well i think that's uh fedarian mathis i think that's how you say his name uh he's gonna be a good one too i think he'll end up playing on the top 60 next in next year's draft but uh barmore man uh, just the moves, the, the different ways he's able to win. That one right there is an impressive one in my opinion. But let's move forward and get into the next play. Now, this is going to be the sack that Barmore gets. Um, he's going to just go right around number 77. Like, 77's lost. He's confused. Uh, but at the same time, he wants nothing to do with the best defensive tackle coming out of the draft. He doesn't want to block him. He doesn't want anything to do with him. Uh, 58, I mean, you you leave someone like this, uh, a first-round pick, an NFL uh, potential superstar, in my opinion, you don't block him, he's going to destroy your quarterback. And this is unfortunate for the quarterback because, as you know, you expect your O-line to, to be able to help out here and at least slow the guy down, but... Nah, man, you don't block 58. He, he's in there within, like, two seconds. He's hitting the quarterback, man. Like, and even less than that, one and a half seconds, he's, he's in there. All right, uh, let's get into the next one. Now, when I say let's get into the next play, what I mean is let's get into the next game, right? Um, I'm not going to go thoroughly as much as we did with the Ohio State game. Um, I'm going to just show you guys a couple more plays. But here's a good play. Here's a good pass rush. You know, in the Notre Dame game, uh, Christian Barmore dominated, right? And and he got so many good reps. Like, um, he's he's hard to block, man. You have to double team him. This right guard 
there's no way he was going to block him. Uh, but, like, you know, when, when I watch this play, you look at the speed. You look at how fast he gets in there and how quickly he's able to get in there and hit the quarterback. Just compare that to every other defensive lineman because there's three other guys that are trying to rush the passer and look how much easier Barmore makes it seem right like he makes it so much easier you know he's he's a special player uh let's let's move forward and let's get into the next play you know another thing that I really like about Barmore is his 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 uh speed his his feet right he has quick feet uh, you can't run outside stretch plays with him because he'll shut it down like there's no way he's going to allow you to run these plays. And when an NFL team has a defensive tackle that has feet like this, right, the the hands to keep that, in this instance, it's the right guard, like that's an easy block for a lot of guards. But with Christian Barmore, like he sees it and he knows what's coming. And the first thing he does is he stops that guard in his tracks, right? Because you're not going to let that guard keep stretching this play out because if you let him keep stretching this play out what's going to happen is that guard is going to be able to hook Barmore and Barmore doesn't allow it he beats he he stops him right so for example in this play if this guard is able to just get around Barmore right the same way this guy has gotten around this guy the same way this guy has kind of stopped him you see this backside guy cut this guy down if the right guard is able to stop Barmore this play hits for a lot of yards. Barmer stops the guard. He gets his hands to push the guard off of him. And he just ch follows this play like there's nowhere this running back can go. Like, could you imagine if you're the running back and you're trying to get to the outside and you have this 315 pound, 6'5", humongous defensive tackle standing there like, what do you do? You know, um, it's interesting because most defensive tackles don't reset the line of scrimmage the way Barmore does here. Uh, but he does, and he allows Will Anderson Jr., and he gets in it as well, and they basically shut this play down together. But that's the backside defensive end, right? He does his job. He's going to just chase this down. Uh, and, of course, the way Barmore handles it, the way Will Anderson, uh, who, who's a true freshman starting for Alabama, he's going to be a fantastic player. The way these two guys handle this, man, uh, that's special. But let's move forward, and let's get into the next play. Now let's go back a couple weeks to the Arkansas game, and I want you guys to watch Barmore here going up against this guard. Uh, that's a that's a, it's a pretty good block right here by this guard. Um, but I want you guys to focus in really on the um, the way that Barmore is gonna basically keep this guard from being able to block him. First and foremost, Barmore always does a great job, right? His his initial hands, his initial punch, it always lands in the perfect spot, right? You see that Barmore has his right arm in those chest plates he's trying to control this lineman um the lineman does a good job he fights right um, but you see that right hand on the inside but this left hand is on the outside and you can't have that as a defensive lineman you need to get both hands to the inside of the lineman right the person with his hands to the inside wins uh, most of the time um, in this instance watch his left arm he's going to come underneath on the inside of this offensive lineman's right arm and using his left arm Barmore's gonna try to rip that arm out okay I'm gonna try doing this slow so you guys can see it but there goes Barmore's left arm and then he's gonna rip past that and to, to try to knock that arm off of him now the offensive lineman's holding him uh, legally holding him um, but he's he's still able to win right because the the guy isn't able to um he's not able to kick his hips out this way because Barmore has the control with his right arm, right? Barmore's able to push with that right arm of his and the lineman's not able to uh, to push him. But Barmore's hands and, and the way he controls people, man, it's impressive. And that's the thing that I see scouts talking about all the time is how he's able to control people. Um, he understands that he's 6'5". He's 315 pounds. He understands that he knows how to win and he's only going to get better in the NFL. So I'm excited to kind of see, you know, what he does uh, in this first year, in his second year. You know, he's one of the players that I'll be absolutely following no matter where he ends up. Um, and I really look forward to watching him. But let's move forward, man. And, and let's just jump forward into this next play. All right, guys, so I want you guys to check this play out against Kentucky. It's a couple weeks, uh, week seven, I believe. Um, here's Barmore, and you're going to see him control this right guard. Again, um, you know, I, I love Barmore for his ability to control people. 
right? Uh, he stays low. He keeps his hips square. He has a nice base. But, like, just look at how much lower he is than number 61, right? Like, there's no way to win if you're going to just be lower than someone, right? If, if you're above someone and, you're, and you don't keep your butt down and you don't keep your hips straight, uh, it's hard to win, man, especially against people uh, like Barmerite, like big six, five long arm, 315-pound defensive lineman. Um, Barmer is going to beat a lot of people up, man, and I, I'm, I'm excited. I can't wait to see him get into the NFL. I think he's going to be a great player. Uh, I, I see him making the Pro Bowl. I see him uh, becoming an All-Pro player. Uh, that's how high I think of Christian Barmore. And if there's anyone out there that thinks that Barmore is not a top uh, 15 to 20 pick, I think they need to put the film on um, and watch a little bit more of him. You know, and you always have to keep in mind, like he wasn't as healthy in the first, um, I'd say, you know, first half of the season as opposed to the second half. And he dominated more in the second half and he still had a pretty good first half right like even look at this play right here man like he just he holds his ground um, and that's a big freaking guard that he's going up against i don't even know who that is but uh you look at or, or i should say that tackle like that's a big dude um and even that guard actually they're both big guys <laughs> uh but yeah man barmer does a great job holding his own help making the tackle there uh, I'm excited. I'm excited to kind of see how the draft shapes out, how the NFL shapes out. Uh, I really want to know what you guys think. Uh, and let me know in the comments below if you guys are watching to this point and what you think of this video format specifically as opposed to the other film breakdowns I did, right? I did a Parsons one and I did another one before that as well. So let me know what you guys think about this video. Make sure to hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe if you guys are not subscribers. It really does help me out a ton. Um, and I'll have more videos for you guys soon. So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys next time with another video.